everyone. Welcome to Comic-Con 2012. Here we go again. here with Dan Goodsell, a.k.a. Mr. Toast himself. What's new? What's happening at Comic-Con for you? Uh, we uh, do our Comic-Con exclusive every year, and this year we have a super Mr. Toast. Woohoo! We uh, make a thousand, and um, we sell them here, and then if we have a few extras, we sell them on our website. Nice, nice. How are they selling for you? They're actually selling really good. Fantastic. Know, it's, uh, could, could we maybe see another color in the future? They're actually, I also did a blue version. Nice. Is and that I for like, another show? Maybe for Designer Con, I don't know. But Designer I Con? That sounds like a really fun show. Don't miss it. <laughs> uh, but I only did 200 of the blue. And so I'll probably with those ones, I'll number them and do like a handmade tag. Oh, very cool. Very yeah. cool. So what have you seen? What's the weirdest thing you've seen this year at Comic-Con? The weirdest thing I've seen at Comic-Con. Or the coolest. I'll go either way. Cool or weird. Wow. Oh, I really like the 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 uh, Cartoon Network booth has like the giant regular show set up from the cartoon. Oh yeah, yeah. So I really like that. I thought that was cool. That was like the one picture I took. I went over there and stood in the booth <laughs> and you know got my picture on the set of the regular show. Nice. That was that was the one goal you had for Comic Con. All yeah. right. So what can we look forward to for Mr. Toast aside from the blue superhero at Designer Con? We have a new comic. It's about Shaky Bacon going on vacation in Mexico, and it's uh, pretty hilarious. And that'll be out, you know, right after the con, too, and we're kind of a bunch more comics and... Not to spoil of... anything, but does yeah. he drink the water? No. <laughs> we don't make... I didn't think of that. Man, that's like the one... Number that, two. The one easiest joke, and I, like, totally miss it. Oh, man. No, it's okay. It's room for growth in that okay. series. You can room have him go growth. again. Yes. Cabo again. trip two. Again and again. <laughs> spring break. Shaky on spring break. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much for the time, and have a great rest of the con. You too. Bye. Bye.
Welcome to Comic Con 2013. This is the future. <laughs> Are they doing that again? We're doing the future again. I mean, the, cookies. This is the drunk cookie interview. Uh -huh. So, Scott Tolleson, how's Comic Con been for you? Comic Con's been really good. Um, it's been really fun so far. I don't even think we're halfway through it. But um, I'm ready to go home. Yeah? Are you ready for more cookies? Yeah, let me get another one. Okay, yes, please. What kind of cookie are you eating? This one. A Maui milk chocolate coconut almond. That's fancy. Do you want a cookie? No, thank you. It would have some nuts in your mouth? Uh, yes, but I would not like a cookie, thank you. Okay. So, what are you selling and what have you sold out of? How'd you know I sold out of something? Because I'm in the booth next to you. <laughs> well, I'm selling a large variety of things. What? I'm selling a large variety of things, including plush, vinyl, mini paintings, MP3 players. Wait, we have to show them. No, don't show that. Yeah. Um, it's him. And then some Japanese vinyl that I worked with um, some guy, um, November Toys, Jorge Haspar. I think is his name. Uh, we collaborated. He sounds illegal. Jorge Haspar. That's what we're going to start calling him. Um, we collaborated on a Japanese vinyl that we just debuted here at Comic Con, the early blue edition. Of Deadbeat. Of Deadbeat. This is his name. Uh, we had 20 uh, here at the con, and those are gone, way gone. And why are you laughing? <laughs> oh, I don't have a cookie in my mouth. <laughs> That's why so, I'm laughing. So those are sold out. Um, everything else is doing really good. The Nozolots are doing really good. My spirits are high. <laughs> Which Nozolot is selling the best? Sejo seems to be selling the best because she's the, the newest one. Interesting. Which color of Sejo? The blue and pink. Is really? doing really good, yeah. I'm surprised. She's, that's the party version. No, we're the party version. Because we like to party. Co yeah, party. And and, and my wife and child have gone back uh, home, so I'm here at the rest of Comic-Con all by myself. Pining for his wife and child. So I need someone to take care of me and make sure I can find my hotel later. And that's what October Toys is here for. That's what we do here at October Toys. That's what we, we do in the toy community. We help each other. We help you find your hotel. <laughs> because someone can't use their GPS. Well, thank you so much, Scott. You're and welcome. we will catch up with you later uh, after Comic-Con. Alcohol and cookies. Alcohol and cookies. We're over here at the Super 7 booth. Let's go find out what's new. 
Hey everyone, we're here with Frank from Super 7. Uh, how's the show going for you? Uh, it's going great. We're having a lot of fun. We have some big announcements, some new products. Big announcements? Big announcements you've announced or coming up? Uh, both. <laughs> well, what have so, you announced? Tell us what's new. Well, we can take a look here. This is some of the teasers for some of the uh, upcoming toys we have. The one in front here is from Invisible Creature, uh, designed nice. by Don Clark. I love the, the fur. Uh, his name is Stinson, <laughs> and he's part of the Odd Galaxy line. And when he comes out, he'll be articulated at the head. Oh, wow. Uh, there's going to be hidden wheels underneath so he can roll as well. Wow, really articulated and really yep. fun to play with. And then uh, the two in the back are part of our Destroy All Kaiju line. Amazing. Uh, old school style Japanese vinyl toys. Uh, the Crystal Mecha is designed by Brian Flynn. And El Diablo, the satanic super robot, is designed by the artist Coop. Nice. Yes. Got some big names going on over here at Super 7, a, we, as always. We've wanted to work with Coop for a while, so this was a great fit. Very cool. That's great that you're showing these off. Uh, later this year? Early next year? Uh, hopefully by the end of the year for one or two of them. Cool. cool. I don't know if all three will make it by the end of the year. All right, so you have another big announcement here at Comic-Con. Yes. Which is... The Aline. Alien. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> um, so this is probably our biggest announcement for the con. Um, basically, it's a very long story. I'll try to tell it short. Okay. But there was, were toys planned to be released in 1979 from the, the original Alien film that were never made. We have since tracked down the prototypes, and now we're going to make these toys for the first time. Wait, these are the original prototypes? That's a cast directly off a 33-year-old original there. So, I'm guessing from Kenner, right? Uh, Kenner was the original manufacturer. But now we're That's the amazing. only manufacturer because they never did it. Amazing. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. So are you re-sculpting any bits of it? You know, just update it a little bit or we straight don't off? We don't change anything. Job. This will be five points of articulation. They'll be on a blister card. It'll be just like it should have come out in 1979. Oh, wow. That's yes. amazing. Taking us it's, back. It's good. It's going to be fun. Um, uh, it's actually, there's a lot of excitement from Alien fans who have seen or heard rumors of the, of the toys that never happened. And, now they are. All right, so three and three quarter inch action figures. Yep. Uh, what's the first one to come out and when ish? Uh, the first series will be released next year. Mm -hmm. There's five characters in oh. total. We're wow. probably we're probably going to release three at first. It'll be Alien and two other characters we haven't decided. Okay. And then we'll do a second series probably of the Alien reissued with two more characters and then all five are out. Nice. Yeah. That's really exciting. Yeah. You guys are going to kill with that. Uh, I hope so. It's, uh, <laughs> we, we've been working on this for over two years to track down the parts. To get, I'm amazed to get, that you found these. It, it, it wasn't... Was it in someone's basement? It was in basements, plural. It, oh, it, no. If it was only one stop shopping, it would have been great and easy, but <laughs> we had to find each one individually. That's yeah. the real toy hunting people yeah. <laughs> right here. They're doing it for you. <laughs> How have your uh, exclusives been going here? Uh, great. It's been a um, pretty busy show. Uh, nothing but excitement for most of our products, but also the upcoming stuff. Maybe not the designer toy stuff. Some of the other new things that we announce are uh, definitely getting a lot of attention. Very cool. And what do we have to look forward to from Super 7? You'll be, you'll be at Designer Con, right? We'll be at Designer Con, Star Wars Celebration, New York Comic Con. Woo! We'll be doing all those shows. Ooh, you're busy. But of course, Designer Con is the one we're looking the most forward to. Of course. <laughs> Excellent. So tell me real quick, what's the coolest or weirdest thing you've seen at Comic-Con this year? Mm, I'm not sure. Um, uh, coolest thing I think I saw was the uh, Hot Toys Batmobile. The oh, 1966 nice. Batmobile. But that's nice. just me personally. No, I approve. Yeah. Oh, sweet. <laughs> yeah. I, I approve of Batman-related merchandise. Awesome. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time, yeah, and no good problem. luck with the rest of the show. Cool.
exclusive at Comic-Con. This one is from Roto Fuji. It is the Tim Biscup Helper Dragon. And oh my gosh, it's amazing. If you remember the uh, Moldorama machines, Roto Fuji got theirs up and running with a Tim Biscuit, Tim Biscup special edition. And Spanky and Scott are here to tell us all about it, guys. Take a bite. <laughs> it's, it's delicious. Tim Biscup helper, Rotomatic, Rotomatic from Roto Fuji. Um, he just brought them over. They look really good. They're only six dollars. Um, they're a mixture of wax and uh, plastic that melt at 200 degrees Celsius. Um, so if you live in an oven, not recommended to get one of these. Oh. Seam? What? Mm. Oh, and there's sign. He, take a bite. He signed it. They're fine on bottom. Yeah. By Tim Biscuit. Six dollars. They're hollow. They're hollow inside. They're really shitty made, but there's something awesome about that. Yeah, because Tim Biscuit's cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna clean the flashing for him with my fingernail. No, you're supposed to leave that on. Mm -mm. I don't think there's many left. Uh -uh. I think nope. they're, they're sold out of the orange and the red. Orange and red. There's only yellow left. Oh, they have a yellow. Then we got these, and um, I'm out of cookie, but. There it is, yellow. They have the machine in their shop and it makes it. Amazing. Thank you so much, guys, for the inside scoop on the Tim Biscup exclusive over at Roto Fuji. And hopefully, Roto Fuji will be making more of these Molda Rama, what do they call them? The, the Roto, 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 Magic. Roto Magic exclusives. Roto Magic. Roto Matic. Roto Matic exclusives in the future. So watch for that. Peace.
everyone. We're here with a very special guest at the Mattel booth. This is Pixel Dan. Pixel Dan. That's from, me. From pixel-dan.com where correct. you can find videos that he does, amazing videos Thank on you. all the He-Man figures and action figure podcasts. And you do so many amazing things and new <laughs> shows. You. Feel free to pimp, pimp your stuff. But also, could you please take a moment to tell us what are the new uh, action figures coming out from Mattel? What are the new He-Man figures? What did oh. you see that was interesting? Just give us a quick breakdown if you don't oh, mind. Oh, absolutely, okay, I'm, absolutely. I'm going to step off because he's a camera whore. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, <laughs> oh, am I now? Okay, well, obviously, I'm a big Masters of the Universe fan. And Masters of the Universe Classics has some amazing new items coming out this year. Of course, one of the big things that I was excited about is my favorite figure getting made finally in the line. Mosquito is coming. And if anybody was in the panel, they probably heard me scream like a little girl because I did I was very excited for him but there's a lot of fantastic things we got Rattler we got Jitsu we got Natasa with the Princess of Power representation we got some filmation figures for the first time with Fang Man coming out the first all filmation character it's very exciting and then of course we've even got a filmation style King Randor which I think was kind of the surprise favorite the reaction he got was immense it was awesome very cool so there's just an amazing array of characters here. We got vintage stuff, we got Princes of Power, we got Filmation, we got some new stuff like King He-Man. What? Awesome, I love it. But there's just so much to be excited for. Masters of the Universe fans, I mean, God, this is like a dream toy line for us, you know? This is, it makes me want to cry. I'm so happy sometimes. <laughs> I'm such a nerd. <laughs> Uh, what, what do you think? Is there any of them that stand out to you? I mean, what? Uh, what? Seriously, are there any that stand out to me? Have, have oh you my seen? gosh, Granamir, right? And this is not a two-up prototype. No, that is this it. This is a. This is the size of the production figure. He is like a small child in your he, arms. He's that going is to how be big. my small child. Yes. <laughs> I will cradle him. I will love him. I will name him George. And he's a, <laughs> and it will be confusing. He's a very <laughs> solid figure too. I mean, he's not rotocast. He's like an action figure. Right, which is also so, why he's going to be a little more than the usual figure. Eighty dollars. Yes, $80. yes, eighty dollars. But look at him. He's amazing. He, he's a must-have for any Filmation Masters of the Universe fan. Or Dragon fan. Or Dragon fan. Even oh, if yeah. you've never heard of He-Man, which I don't know how that's possible. How, but who are those people? They're not watching. Uh, they, don't okay, know, okay. they don't know what's going on. <laughs> All right, very cool. Um, so aside from this, have you seen anything at Comic-Con that's crazy or cool or weird? Crazy or cool, man. Uh, it's just, it's this whole place is crazy. <laughs> I'll tell you that. It's hard to maneuver through this place, and there's so much to see. But no, everything's been really exciting. You know, the has Bro booth had some cool stuff. I love seeing Marvel Legends actually really yes. getting like a big Did return. you get your derpy? I did not get a derpy. I tried to get a derpy for my wife and it sold out every day and the Hasbro line is the worst line ever to go. Well, through. hopefully there'll be some online yeah, Hasbro toy shop. I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try to get one. Uh, all right. So thank you so much for your time. Do you want to pimp some of your shows and some of your sure, sites? Sure. Absolutely. Please. Yeah. Uh, you can find me at my site, which is pixel-dan.com. Uh, lots of video reviews, uh, commentary on toys, write-ups, anything like that. You love Masters of the Universe. You love vintage toys. I love vintage toys. I talk about those all the time. So that's where all. Well, how can you not? I mean, they're just making the vintage toys again, which right? is amazing. Absolutely. Right. So you got to know where they came. From from <laughs> a very nostalgic person I am so if you're into that sort of thing you might dig me you actually <laughs> learn things from him unlike oh. my show <laughs> <laughs> I have fun with your show oh, that's good. all that okay. really matters okay. it's more okay. fun than mine is Oh, <laughs> all right well thank you so much for your hey, time thanks for having me it thanks for hanging honor. out at comic-con uh, you can also find you on he-man.org did you say that? yes oh yes uh, of course I'm also on he-man.org that's where you can find my masters of the universe classics reviews and I'm always on the forum so you guys want to chat with me I'm always there he's available is what available, he's available for interviews. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. Hey, thank you. Have thank a good you. rest of your con, right, and we'll you see too. you again soon. Awesome. Thanks.
over at the Lego booth with none other than Ace Kim. The What's up? Ace Kim. What's up? Also known as the leader over at From Bricks to Bothans. That's FBTB.net. Hey, Ace, can you take a minute and tell us what's new, what's coming out at Lego? Because I lost my voice. Oh. <laughs> Well, uh, they had a big reveal on Thursday for Lord of the Rings. It's uh, Bag End, which is Bilbo Baggins' house from uh, Lord of the Rings. I mean, The Hobbit. A uh, movie coming out later this year. Uh, then Friday, they revealed a whole mess of minifigs for the Lego DC Universe and Marvel Super Heroes line. Doctor Doom! Doctor Doom in Lego form. Nobody thought that that would ever be made without the Fantastic Four, so that's really exciting. Uh, and then they had the promotional minifig giveaway clusterfuck that uh, <laughs> that everyone had to suffer through. This booth is such a cluster right now. I cannot believe they thought this was a good idea. Posting 4,000 names on eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper in one corner and have a line for people to go around that nobody is uh, Geniuses, I say. It was painful. It yes. was pretty painful. Yes, Aileen actually hid in the corner and, and cried, uh, hugged her knees, <laughs> rocked back and forth, and said, "Mommy." <laughs> yeah. So they said that they were going to try to do this this method to reduce the the trampling effect on the little kids. Yeah, clearly that's working. What <laughs> <laughs> the f a? What the f were they thinking, huh? Yeah, and then yesterday they had the uh, Rancor set for Star Wars. Fits right below Jabba's palace. Amazing. That was kind of cool. And uh, today's Ninjago Day. Have and you seen it. the Ninjago thing yet? No. Oh, yeah. I don't really care about it. Neither do I. Ninjago. How's the Rancor look? What do you think of that? Uh, it's a little small. It looks like Rancor's kid. That's what she said. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think it should have been at least two or three times bigger. Um, but I think, you know, it looks really good by itself. Yeah? Yeah. Very cool. So where can people go to find out information on all these sets when they're coming out? FBTB.net. Frank Boy, Tom Boy, dot net. Or from Bricks to Boffins. Yes, net. yes. And you also have a very active forum. Very active forum. We run contests uh, pretty much every two months. So we have a big tournament coming out later this year for uh, themed around Lego superheroes. When's that so going to be starting? Out. Starts in September. So just around the corner. So be sure to go sign up for your account now, because he doesn't like latecomers. Yes, and that's uh, also what she said. And then, you know, right now you'll probably be able to find a video of me like totally giving my two cents worth about what happened yesterday. I can't believe that, that they did not foresee this. It's not a genius to realize that. Comic Con is a very crowded place. Lego makes some great products and everyone wants it. But no, they thought, we'll just make one list. People come by, they'll breeze right through. Yeah, right. Oh, you know what? They can come anytime between four and six. Nope. Four o'clock. Oh, I gotta be at Lego. Find my stuff. Did I win? And you have this guy over here saying, step back, move over here, the line's over here. No, the line's over here. There's no line, it's just a mob. Really. And I'd like to thank Brothers Brick for posting that. <laughs> and uh, that's it. I'm done with the show. Awesome, thank you so much for taking the time to take a toy break with us. You're welcome. I have a question. What's up? Real quick. Since you've never been on the show, I have to ask. It's, it's, okay. it's a standard. It's not painful, don't worry. Okay. Are you ready? Sure. Now think about toys when I'm telling you this. Good. Good. Leave it in the box right. or take it out and play with it. Take it out and play with it. That's what she said. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Bye. Bye.
everyone. We're over here at the 3D Retro Frank Kozik booth with none other than Vlad. I'm oh, just Hi. kidding. It's Oben. Oh my gosh. So I want to know all about how Comic Con's going, how your first exhibitor booth at Comic Con's going. Tell me everything, you guys. Uh, Comic Con's going really well. We've been selling a lot of our exclusives that we have available. They're uh, French. Oh yes, they are. They are French exclusives. Um, no, we're having a blast. It's a little bit different being an exhibitor than an attendee or even being an attendee with an exhibitor badge and camping at your friend's booth. Um, it's uh, a little bit more tiring. Uh, a few longer hours, you can't party it as hard as we used to, but uh, otherwise it's good. Um, we're in the row with uh, Tokidoki behind us, but we also have DKE to the side of us, so we've been getting a lot of people, a lot of celebrities coming through, a lot of press coming through. Sloppy and Tokidoki seconds. Yes, and I have a labbit on my head. Yeah. It's been very busy, very fun, yeah. doing the Kozik booth, doing through the Retro booth. A lot of fans of Kozik, a lot of fans of Toy Break coming, stopping by. Where's the t-shirt? Where can I get the O-Ben t-shirt? <laughs> the O-Ben t-shirt. Uh, nowhere. Well, nowhere. Is these, the answer. These are just for us. There's, there's going to be a few given to friends, uh, like press. But if it's popular enough, maybe we will print them up and uh, sell them. You have to guys get on the forum and tell us if you would actually buy them. So maybe we'll print a, the October Toys Forum at octobertoys.com slash forum. So actually, the one that we've uh, been selling the most is the Ron English Bart Simpson grin. We only have like two or three of them left, and today's Saturday, so they're going to go. Very popular. Um, aside from that, the OMFG color-changing units, uh, those packs have been selling really well. Extremely popular. And uh, we're actually selling the glow-in-the-dark shrimpies really well, too. So I think we're going to sell out of those um, before the show ends. But don't worry, we've held a few back for the Toy Break viewers. Um, you know, boot ball's selling all right. Nathan hasn't come by yet. Uh, he'll be here later on today, so we'll sell. Who else do you want to throw under the bus? Uh, uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> no, everything's actually been selling really well, so we've been really happy. So. The coolest or weirdest? Oh, I think the portal arm. I want to see that in action. People have been carrying around oh, the yeah, big a lot portal of arm carrying that from the video game portal. And yeah. then uh, I want to see that in action. I don't know. Uh, we're, cool. I, you know, it's like there's... The Lego Hulk is incredible. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, no, well, the life-size uh, guys from The Hobbit at The at the Hobbit's Very booth, impressive. that's pretty cool. Very impressive. But yeah, weird to say, I mean, there's so many people in costume here just wearing all kinds of weird shit. So, I saw Raj from Big Bang Theory. Yeah, we got WB right over here, so... And uh, that's one of our workers selling a shrimpy. So uh, if you're... Uh, yeah, wrap it up. Yeah, let's wrap it up. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> and uh, hopefully I'll see you guys on the next toy break. We survived Comic-Con 2011.